I released a video last month where I had taken around 200 gigs of drive reliability data covering around 350,000 hard disks over a 10 year period, which is provided publicly by Backblaze, a cloud backup provider. This data consists of around 410 million rows of daily drive statistics and that's around 1.2 billion data points. So it is a fantastic source of real world drive reliability data and I will link the sources below if you wanna go and check that data out yourself. Today, we're gonna to mine that data and perform an AFR analysis for larger capacity drives, e.g. those of 10 terabytes and above. AFR data is most useful for large data sets, so we will focus on the models that have at least 500 units deployed and at least one year of data. In this video, I take around 230,000 of these drives of size 10, 12, 14 and 16 terabytes and we compare models from Seagate, Western Digital, Toshiba and HGST to see how these stack up and which manufacturers produce the most reliable drives. This does change over time as we will see and it's heavily influenced by some bad models that had high failure rates. So I will give all the context by breaking it down by model and providing time series data so we can see how AFR changes over the lifetime of these drives. And we can then compare data from these 18 different disk models from these four vendors and gauge how these compare. The Backblaze data doesn't contain AFR data, it has to be derived from this information. So quite a bit of work is required to turn the raw 410 million rows into graphs that tell us the story. So when we talk about failures, this is an example of what a bathtub curve looks like. It shows that it is common to have early failures which can show up as DOAs if QA isn't good enough or can be caused by a logistics problems such as inadequate packaging or someone simply drop kicking your disc at the courier facility. Other than kinetic damage, these problems can be caused by component failures or assembly defects. And it's true that with discs, you might expect a higher chance of drive failures within a month or two of deployment. Next, we have a phase of random failures, which tends to be fairly flat, and depending on the design life and quality of the product, this phase can extend for a long period of time. If your disk reaches this phase, it typically has a lower chance of failure. Happy days. And eventually the disk will just start to wear out. Spinning disks have moving parts, servos for heads, motors for the rotating platters and bearings. There can also be magnetic degradation of the platter substrate and material wear leading to tolerances becoming worse in moving parts such as the head assembly. Head crashes, bearing failures, bad sectors, increased vibrations can then be the outcome and at some point the drive will just fail. This all leads to an upward trend in failures and when this phase happens it'll tell you what the reasonable expectation might be for the average drive life. In truth, every drive model will produce a different curve, but the shape of this curve gives you a great impression of what to expect from an average drive and how reliable the model might be. But as the back end of the bathtub curve indicates, AFR does increase later in life and that failure has become more and more likely. So let's talk about AFR specifically and why more data produces more robust information. So AFR is an abbreviation of the annualized failure rate. And in basic terms, it tells you the percentage chance that any given drive will fail in the course of one year. So if you own 20 drives and the AFR is 5%, you can statistically expect that one of those drives will fail each year. However, there are two problems with this. First of all, this would be based on averages and your drives may fail sooner or later. Just because your drive's AFR is 1%, meaning only one in 100 drives would fail in a year, it doesn't mean that your drive can't fail on day one. These are probabilistic failure rates and not deterministic ones. And manufacturers quote a fixed AFR for the drive, for example, 0.35% is quoted by all the manufacturers for drives we're looking at today. But real AFR numbers change over time. A drive that has been running for 10 years won't have an AFR of 0.35%. And as we will see, that very few of the drives we look at today ever hit 0.35% at any point during the cumulative data. And quickly on that topic, I calculated failures based on weekly data in this analysis. The shorter the time frame, the more granular you get, but also the more lumpy the data begins. So to stop this being too spiky, I've used cumulative data, and this means that for each week, we consider the entire historical data set providing the line graph of a progressive lifetime AFR. This smooths the curve so it's more coherent, and it also shows you how AFR develops over the life of a drive. It also means that over time, any individual drive will have less impact on the curve and means that trend data provides a big picture view on the performance of the drive cohort as a whole. 
So let's quickly review the drives we're going to look at today and the criteria I highlighted leaves us with 18 drive models where we have reasonable data to work from and these are as follows. So from HGST we have three models from the Ultrastar HC520 series and these are branded HGST but HGST is a subsidiary of Western Digital so the model numbers also match WD model numbers. We have three different 12 terabyte models here with different features. And in total, there's 27,000 HGST drives in this group. So from Seagate, we have seven models, and these range from the Exos X10, X12, X14, and X16 ranges, varying from 10 to 16 terabytes. Seagate is the largest deploy base at Backblaze, and the drives we look at here total 115,000 units. We then look at five Toshiba models from the Enterprise Capacity MG07 and MG08 ranges, again, with varying features. Backblaze has a lot of recent Toshiba drives deployed and this cohort totals 65,000 drives. And then finally, we look at recent Western Digital drives which are all from the Ultrastar HC530 and HC550 ranges. So these are really the same line as the HGST drives but they're now branded Western Digital. And we have 14 terabyte and 16 terabyte drives here and it's a total of about 25,000 units. So let's get straight to the AFR data to see how the models stack up. And in order to remove any problems from comparing AFR and DIS with different service lives, this graph is based purely on drive age and not based on dates. This means that the disks are arranged into data points based on their power on hours and failure counts. So the comparison is the number of drives that failed, for example, at week 100, with the total number of drives that were at 100 weeks of power on time. Many drives are between one and five years old, so may not have reached that final phase where failure rates increase. If the curve starts to climb earlier, it suggests that drives are failing earlier. And I use five years as a baseline as this is the stated warranty period for all of these enterprise class drives from all four of these manufacturers. So on this graph, we can see HGST are represented by gray lines, Seagate by green, Toshiba by red, and WD by blue. And we will look at each of these drives as they're difficult to distinguish at first glance. So let's dive into the data. And for the HGST Ultrastar HC520 drives, we can see that the earlier failure rates, and then we can see they settle down into a random failure portion. The older drives here are 4.3 to 4.5 years old, and the ALE 600 and 604 models do not seem to be moving into the worn out failure stage as yet. But the ALN 604 looks like it's starting that phase, starting from about 3.5 years of drive age. Now for the Seagate drives, the X10 NM86 drive seems to have a growing failure rates from around the one year mark and its lifetime AFR is now settling above 2%, but it does have a relatively small deploy base at just 1300 drives. The remaining drives, which still total over 80% of the deployed number, does have an average life of approaching six years. So despite the 2% AFR, it's actually fairly impressive. These, along with the next drive from Seagate, are the oldest 10 terabyte drives run by Backblaze. The Exos X12 NM7 fleet, which is nearly 40,000 drives, is the one that was suffering from over 2% AFR even when the drives were only 1.5 years old. And in fact, this drive model was nearly entirely decommissioned in July 2020 timeframe, presumably because the failure rates and that there was a known issue that was identified. This drive has been specifically called out by Backblaze as having a high failure rate. After the majority were decommissioned, the remaining drives have been really stable, uh, but there's so few left that reducing from 38,000 to just 1,300, that the remaining drives have not materially moved the AFR and it's remained constant at around 2%. Now the X14 version of this, the NM08, has an AFR of below 1%, but this has been rising from one year to four years of age to around 1.6, where it's shown signs of settling. The X16 versions of the 12, 14, and 16 terabyte discs are generally below 1% AFR, which is respectable after three to 3.7 years, with the 14 terabyte version starting to creep up but the X14 version of the 14 terabyte disc looks really bad in comparison with a rapidly climbing AFR, where after just 2.5 years of age, it's approaching 6%. I'd say this is certainly a model that should be avoided. So it looks like there are some specific Seagate models which have been problematic, but the X16 series seems to be improved, although it has higher AFR generally than the HGST drives. At around 1%, it's still not terrible, however. Given that the X16s are around or below this after three to three and a half years, 
1% means that for every 100 drives, you know, you're statistically only going to lose one a year. Right, looking at the Toshiba drives, for the 14 terabyte MG07 series discs, the TA variant, which is the native 4KN drive, has a higher earlier failure or DOA rate than we've seen so far, starting at 4%, but it does rapidly fall below 1% AFR and stays there with a slow increment for just five years. There's no sign at 4.8 years that the drives are wearing out. The TEY variant, however, doesn't look so good, and actually the AFR is 74% in the first week dropping to 32% in week two and then 21% in week three, actually off the top of this chart, meaning that in the first week of deployment, one in 70 drives failed. Then the rapid drop in AFR implies that drives are more likely to be DOA and the number rapidly drops nearer to 3.5% after just 10 weeks. However, even after two and a half years, it has not got below 1% AFR, not matching the 0.35% stated in the data sheet. And this again is for a relatively small sample of only 635 units. So maybe the earlier failures dissuaded the purchase of more of this drive. For the MG08 range to 16 terabyte units, the TA 4KN unit, which has 5,000 drives deployed, starts at 43% AFR also, but it falls below 1% within five weeks. It then maintains a really consistent 0.5 to 0.55% level all the way through to nearly three and a half years, which are the oldest units. The TEY unit, which is the 512E drive with secure instant arrays, also with around 5,000 drives deployed is similar, but it has a much lower earlier failure rate. It has maintained less than 0.5% AFR for two and a half years while it's been in service. Now, the 16 terabyte TE unit isn't quite as good with our AFR varying from one to nearly 2% and then settling just below 1.5% for the two years of data available. I'd say that overall, it seems Toshiba have a higher DOA or earlier failure rate, but after a few months, they seem to be reliable at below 1% AFR. There are some limited deployments past three and a half years, and none of the drives yet has shown where it's gonna to start to wear out. But the 16 terabyte TE seems to be the worst one based on the data here. So finally now, well, let's look at the WD branded versions of those HTSD Ultra Stars. These drives come from the HC530 and the HC550 ranges, and they look impressive from a reliability perspective. In fact, they are the three best performing drives from all of the ones we looked at today from an annualized failure rate. The 14 terabyte 6L4 model starts with 2% AFR, but it quickly falls to 0.5. And then after around one year of life, it slowly improves where it settles at 0.33%. The only drive so far to actually meet its stated 0.35% AFR from the data sheets. Of the 16 terabyte Unix, the 6L0 unit is even more impressive. Starting at 2.4% AFR and then falling to below 0.3 within 19 weeks, it then continues to settle down to just 0.13% AFR. The deploy base is smaller at 2,700 units and the drives have only got about one and a half to two and a half years on the clock, but you can visually see how good these drives are. The 6L4 variant of this drive, which has a much larger deploy base of 14,000 units, but only with around an average of one year of service life, has also settled to 0.3% after starting at 3.5% AFR. However, it is very early days for this drive model, and one year of data is not really sufficient to draw strong conclusions. So overall, the new large capacity enterprise drives from WC are the most impressive out of the gate. We have to keep an eye on these as they age, as they still have relatively low service life. So just before I deliver my conclusions, I would ask at this point that you hit the like button if the video is useful um, and informative and consider subscribing for more of my content as I try to build my channel. It's still small, but I'm trying to focus on quality and making each video better for you. And I spent a lot of time crunching data for this one. I really appreciate all the likes and comments I get and please share your thoughts on the analysis below. I love constructive feedback. So the Western Digital Drives look very impressive from a reliability standpoint, but we will have to see how the bathtub curb develops. If they can continue to maintain this reliability up to the five year range, they will be true winners. The HGSD drives that precede them also look good, but what this really means is that the HGSD pedigree seems to have not only stuck with the drives following the WDC integration of HGSD, but they continue to build on that quality. Toshiba drives appear to have higher DOA rates, but they seem to maintain a below 1% AFR as many cases, but not all. 40% of the drives we looked at today had an AFR in the 1.5 range. Seagate have by far 
the largest deploy base and model variety, along with the oldest drives. But we see that historical AFR hasn't been as good, but this does seem to be improved with the X16 range of drives, given that the X18, X20, X22 and now the X24 range are available we could hope that further improvements have been made to make them competitive with WC. But for the X16 range, we are seeing a reasonable AFRs of around 1% and the largest fleet size age of these drives makes this data more reliable. The X16s have many drives that are over three years old now and tens of thousands that are over two years old. So Seagate may not make the most reliable drives, at least based on the set of models we see here, but they're often cheaper than the competition and Backblaze have also stated that this is a major factor in model selection, it's not going to be by accident that they use and continue to use so many Seagate drives. So I hope this provides you useful data to help you inform your drive selection and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.